phone. Welcome everyone uh, to Wild Warrior Nutrition. Uh, we haven't done an interview that like this in quite some time, but uh, I am Michael DeCrose, founder and CEO of Wild Warrior Nutrition. And today we have Jason Smith with us all the way from the UK. Um, we recently saw Jason had posted on Instagram a pretty amazing transformation uh, between um, his 40s and his 50s. And so we wanted to bring you on, Jason, and learn more about your story and the changes that you've made in your life over that 10-year period. And um, yeah, well, welcome. Great. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Michael. It's, uh, it's great to be here. So, so yeah, I mean, um, I, I went through a transformation um, as I approached the age of 50. I don't know, maybe something about it being a half century made me think, um, if I keep living the way I'm living, I may not be living for that much longer and certainly not enjoying life as much as I should be for that uh, for that time. And, um, and therefore, I decided to make a, a series of changes, which has led me to now become a, a 54 year old personal trainer, which is quite unusual in itself, I think, certainly yeah. in the UK, um, <clears throat> who specializes in helping um, men and women in their 40s, 50s, make a similar kind of transformation and similar kind of changes to, to the one that I made. Yeah, sure. Well, and I appreciate that. And uh, I actually think it's better to get advice from guys your age that have been through multiple cycles of life, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, youth and college, um, being a, a young father, then yeah. watching your body change in middle life and then getting to where you are now. Um, it's real easy for young influencers. Sometimes I get a little frustrated because all these young influencers are saying, Hey, do what I do, but it doesn't know. It doesn't really matter what they do at 22 to 25. They're going to look great. Yeah. I mean, they're probably a little bit more disciplined, work out a little better, but I don't think that younger influencers appreciate the, the hormonal changes, the met metabolic changes that happened in our bodies as we age and how things we used to be able to get away with um, come back and slowly haunt you. And, and for me, I'm, I'm only 40, but about 32, 33, there was a notable change in just about everything. So maybe, yeah. you, could, maybe you could take us through maybe some of, those, some of your life and some of those different decades and how things led up to where you are and what made you want to change. Yeah, so um, I guess you know, in my in my late teens, um, inspired by the film Rocky Three, um, mm -hmm. that's when I first started to to get into in, into fitness and strength training in particular. Um, that continued into my early twenties, but then as you know, kind of uh, adult life, jobs, girls, um, other things took took over. Um, that kind of fell by the wayside and at best you know my training my interest in in health and fitness was sporadic normally driven by a thought of i, I need to do something you know i put on more weight um you know I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling great i need to do something to make myself feel better but it would never last and um i guess during those early times you know what you said is absolutely true you you can get away with so much at that point you know particularly if you've got a barbell or dumbbells in your, in your hands and you you know you're lifting heavy and you can you can strain more than um than you can when you're older um but what i found when i went back to the gym and started to be more consistent with my with my workouts and to take it seriously for the long term was that i i did need to change the way that i trained and um, a couple of things really that I did. One was, you know, the the whole notion of of, of really pushing um, uh, to excess, probably uh, the weights that I would have certainly have done in my younger years. I stopped doing. Um, I do I do still work myself very very hard, and uh, and I did then. And you know, you might call it going to failure. However, you know, the point in which I stop now is is when my form starts to fail you know when I when I can feel that uh, you know arms hands legs feet whatever it might be aren't, aren't in the right place or I'm using muscles that I shouldn't be using for the exercise that um, that I'm performing um, 
that's when I when I you know put the weights down, have a break, and uh, and then uh, and then start again. And the second thing that I did, which is more around you know, as we age, we all know that our our, our muscles, particularly if we if we're sedentary. They're going to go into atrophy. We're, they're going to they're going to start diminishing in terms of their functionality and in terms of their size and definition. Um, but also, you know, our, our metabolism slows down, and and we start to to get um, to get fat buildup, typically for men around the uh, the midriff. And that was something that I really wanted to shift, not particularly for aesthetic reasons, but more for you know the the feeling of being healthy and um you know getting rid of some some uh, health problems that i was experiencing at the time like high blood pressure um and so what i started to do was combine exercises together so um with things like uh uh circuit uh, training um and supersets so uh, as an example you know i would combine something like a, a maybe a, a goblet squat with a dumbbell then go straight into some um uh, bench presses then go straight into some uh some single arm rows and then maybe do some lunges after that the whole purpose of which is you know exercising uh, different muscle groups and giving those muscles time to to rest but getting my heart rate up so that i was working up a sweat i was panting i was uh, burning fat as i was uh, as i was building muscle and i found that incredibly effective um i admit it did draw some strange looks from other gym members because you know you you're working pretty hard when you're working in in that way um but it was incredibly effective and uh and and quite quickly in the greater scheme of things you know made some very noticeable changes both to the way that i felt uh, but also to the way that I looked and you know what I weighed and what my um what what my physique looked like. So yeah, those those were the two big things that I kind of applied um which which were particularly relevant, you know, given my uh, my older years. Yeah. And I'm not surprised you get um odd looks from people. Uh <laughs> when I'm at when I'm at the gym, you know, guys your age the vast majority of them are walking on the treadmill and the weight room is full of 30 and unders. Yes. Um, and it's like the shift happened in, in the, a lot of the guys our, our age and older don't feel that maybe they are for some reason or another, they're, they're not over there. And really, like you said, they should, they should be strength training and with intensity um, and with a goal of, you know, maybe doing a little bit more than they would have as a, as a young man, because you have to, to get, keep the fat off. Yeah. And, you know, particularly with sarcopenia and, and muscle wastage, if you want to have, you know, good quality of life in, in midlife and beyond midlife, you need to keep up your strength training. You need, it's more important, you know, uh, from the age of 40 than it ever was at the age of 20 because it starts to affect your quality of life it's not just about you know looking good and attracting um attracting uh, girls or men um it's it's about how you live your life what you're capable of doing and if you're you know incapable of doing things that that must just be so delibitating you know mentally and physically and so yeah. it, it's incredibly important that, that, that we do it but you're right you know it does seem the preserve of of 30s and under and you know I, I i think that it's up to us older guys to to kind of just you know bite the bullet and break that you know the, you know, the guys in my own experience are, are, are great you know i'm i'm one of the bros at my gym <laughs> you know yeah. it's uh it's uh, and, and we, you know we all get on we all have a great laugh and um you know quite frankly you know those guys when they're 50 mid in their mid 50s they want to be how i am so they respect that and it's uh you know it's 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 a good environment there's there's no problem with it whatsoever yeah for sure and it's just like saving money if it's something you start at a young age and it becomes a habit and part of your routine strength training and just taking care of yourself is just something that's becomes very sustainable um if you can fit it in i know things like work and kids uh you know i've experienced that have come in the way a, a lot but um, it is really important. Uh, Dr. McGuff, are you familiar with Dr. Doug McGuff? Body by I, not in great detail, no. But. Oh, okay. So um, he has a great book, uh, Body by Science. 
It's, okay. Um, and in, in the book, he, he summarizes a lot of research on it. And, and he talks about the number one predictor um, for healthy aging and predictor of whether or not you'll live to be have a long life is how much muscle mass you have, your lean body yeah. mass. Yeah. Uh, and especially for preventing falls, because a lot of folks, like you said, they become unstable, they fall, they have a major injury, and they never fully recover from it. Or if they maintain yeah. the muscle mass in throughout their life, they're less likely to in, encounter some of those things that others will. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it, it's, it's, it, I kind of think we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our families. We certainly owe it to our kids, you know, because, um, you know, we, we, what, what's the alternative? You know, you, you're in that kind of position and, you know, you're reliant on your kids to, you know, kind of look after you and do all of those kind of things or some home help or some, some private care, whatever it might be. It's, it's just so preventable. And, you know, for me, so important because, uh, you know, aside from anything else, and it's great because, you know, um I, I do a lot of in, on instagram as 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 you've seen and it, it's it's great to get the feedback and the comments it's very flattering it makes you feel good it builds your confidence it's um you know and it's kind of ironic that i get all of that in in my 50s but never had anything like that in my 20s you know yeah. um but well that's because it's just so it's, impressive it's, it's, there's an important aspect to this which is about the uh, about the quality of life so yeah i, I can I totally, I totally get, you know, what, what you're saying there. Yeah. Um, do you have kids? Yeah, I've got a son. He's okay. 14. 14. Okay. And so, uh, what did you do to manage your, your health when, as he was growing up? I don't know if there's advice for parents. Um, what did that part of your life look like? Well, I've, I've got two, two sides to that part of my life because really my, my, fitness regime only started five years ago so it was in the january of 2019 that i literally kind of thought you know i I've, I've got to do something here i've got to change um so before that you know my my life was probably that of a of a pretty normal kind of middle-aged dad in you know i was i was, I was 49 then <clears throat> so i was working you know i was um spending time with him but i was finding you know one of the things that that, that I was getting disappointed by was like he was you know nine at the at, at the time you know we'll, we'll be playing football what you would call soccer in um, yeah. in, in in the yard and um you know I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of breath I'm exhausted so I'll come, I'm gonna have to go in and it, I don't want to do that I don't you know I want to be out there playing with him so things like that really kind of got to me um but, you know, I didn't, it's not that I didn't have the time to work out. It's that I didn't even think about finding the time to work out because it wasn't a priority for me. And then in that January of 2019, everything just changed. And I thought, right, I've got to change and I am going to make sure I do. And so I started to schedule things to make sure that um, I actually did it. So on, on some days I would get up earlier and I would go for a run, for example. So... You know, I needed to lose a lot of weight, so it, there was a lot of cardio um, and obviously nutrition involved uh, in the uh, in the earlier stages. And then I would um, I would call in at the gym on the way home from work. I would leave work a little bit yeah. earlier because what I found was, you know, typically I wouldn't be leaving the office until you know around about seven, maybe seven thirty eight p.m. But there was no real need for me to be there. It was just, you know, you, you kind of came in with colleagues or you're just finishing something off. There was no urgent requirement for me to, to be there. So I just started to say, right, I'm going to leave at 6.30. So that gave me the extra time to call in at the gym on the way home and um, and do a quick workout and then uh, and then get home and still have a good family life once uh, once I got home. And I think, you know, one of the things that maybe stops people, and certainly this was this affected me, is that you think, well, you and and you know, some of the influences that you mentioned earlier might might kind of add to this um, to this belief. So you need to go to the gym, and you need to kind of, you know, you need to be in there for a couple of hours or whatever to to get a good workout in, which isn't really true. You know, if you're efficient with your time, if you're uh, efficient with the way that you structure your training. 
you know you can get a damn good workout in 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 45 minutes and in a lot of times you know that's going to be more effective um than it would be if you were if you were in there for twice the uh, the number of hours or minutes so yeah so you know it was about making sure that i found the time but also being very efficient once i was in the gym or even nice on a run you know so if i was doing a if i didn't have much time for a run i would go for a shorter distance but i would run it faster so that i would get my get my heart rate up high quicker and maintain it over that shorter distance if i was going for a longer run then i would go at a slower pace and then um you know kind of manage the heart rate uh, uh, over that longer distance and in the gym similar kind of thing you know so i would go in and do the kind of circuits that um that i was talking about earlier you're doing four exercises one straight after the other you know cutting out the rest time that you would normally have you know by doing you know four sets of 10 or whatever it might be um enables you to do a lot in that amount of time and because you're getting your heart rate up you're working your muscles bloody hard you're getting a very effective uh, workout in. yeah nice so it sounds like you had a career shift you said you're a personal trainer now yeah so, so what, what kind of happened was that um you know I, I was working in the corporate world at that point and um you know for the first couple of years that you know well actually well yeah i was working for the first couple of years into my um into my transformation and then um I, what i noticed during that period was there was a lot of people um in my kind of age group who met the description that you that you gave earlier if you know, you can see that they're a little bit timid about going into certain situations and using you know weights or machines etc that um you know some of the younger folk are working and i also saw people who were being trained by personal trainers who were typically you know in their early 20s um and there was one particular incident where there was a guy and he was on the chest press the ch the seated chest press machine and he's doing his doing his exercises and the personal trainers obviously told him what to do and the personal trainer turns away from the from his clients and starts chatting up the girl is about you know she's very pretty give him that <laughs> and 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 she's on the net on the machine next to his client paying no attention whatsoever to the client and i just thought people deserve something better and um so i decided at that point that um you know i would start doing some um some uh, personal training on top of my career and then kind of it got it to a point where i could um i could afford to come out one one job and focus on the training awesome so i did have a couple specific questions regarding nutrition um, yes one of them i think a lot of uh, middle-aged guys uh struggle with uh is alcohol do you drink alcohol or if you do like what is the frequency of it okay so um in fact i did a post about this the, the other day which got quite a quite a lot of comments um no i don't um one of the big changes that i made um five years ago was i decided that the alcohol was holding me back and i decided that i was um uh, i was going to stop i was going to stop completely and the reason that i went down the stop completely route is that um back in the day i used to smoke and I, I I gave up smoking for about nine years and my my first marriage ended and I started going out with some mates and um you know one of the nights I um said to a mate who smoked oh go and give me a cigarette right at the end of the night and that was it straight back onto it again and so I thought having experienced that I'm just going to stop completely be completely teetotal um and um haven't uh, haven't had a drink since so and 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 you know i don't miss it at all it's um it, it's probably the best thing i've ever done sure yeah it's something i even struggle with i've tried to cut back to just a couple nights a week but i find with kids sports and social events still everything seems to revolve around uh you know having a beer or or something yeah. of that nature constantly or visiting with friends alcohol always seems to be the centerpiece of everything and uh, my wife's done a great job of of um, cutting it out. I mean, she'll have a little bit here and there, but for her, about three or four years ago, she she just made the decision that 
she thought that that was the biggest neg thing holding her back from reaching her weight goals. And she's, she's an avid runner, but she kept, you know, not seeing the progress. And as soon as she cut the beer out of her diet with making no other change, all the excess weight she wanted to lose was gone. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so, uh, you know, good for you for, for doing that. I, I asked that question because, um, it seems to be a theme with a lot of the Instagram transformations around guys our age. Um, that, that seems to be a common thing that, that eventually they get to a point where they just say, this doesn't serve my serve any purpose in my life anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big fan of Laird Hamilton and he's got a similar story where alcohol, he, I don't know if you're familiar with Laird. He's, he's a big wave surfer. He's married to Gabrielle Reese as a yeah. volleyball. And he, and he'll say that, you know, he, he drank, when he was in his thirties riding big waves, drinking, you know, bottles and bottles of wine every night. And then as he yeah. got to forties was, I'm not going to be able to, to surf like this into my forties and fifties if I don't stop. And, and, uh, he's a, a big proponent of, of getting the alcohol out of your life. And, um, so anyways, good for you for, for, for uh, stopping, I, you may even inspire me to further cut, back, <laughs> even though I did buy a bottle of wine earlier today. So, well, well, let me just describe some of the things that happened because um, it was remarkable. Is the only way I can I can describe it. I mean, you know, so I I, I stopped on a, I, I remember the the, the day because it was um, you know I'd had lots of drink on the Sunday before. We'd had a, a family gathering and whatever, and uh, plenty of wine was flowing. So on the Monday morning, I was feeling very under the weather, and and that was when I thought, right, this isn't. If, if your words actually, this isn't doing me any good. It's not serving me any purpose, and I kind of knew that it was holding me back with everything, you know, with with my fitness as well. And so um, I just thought, right, that's it. I'm going to stop. And um, a couple of days later, I just noticed that my running felt easier. You know, just it's just one of those things. Oh, this seems this seems better. A couple of days after that, I was thinking, oh, you know, I can, I need to change the dumbbells. I can, I can go up a weight now. And um, I wear an Apple Watch, and I, I track my sleep and and, uh, and 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 various other things, obviously. But one of the things that was incredible to me was my resting heart rate, um, my waking heart rate, to be exact which over the course of, of three weeks went from an average of about 78 beats per minute down to 52. I mean, it's, it's now in the, in the forties, but that to me in such a short period of time, which was a mixture of, it, it was because I was being more active. I was doing a lot more exercise at this point, but also the stopping drinking that, that just really, and when I saw that, it just confirmed everything that what I thought was the case was actually the case and that it wasn't doing me any good. I was far better off without it. And therefore, you know, staying stopped was, um, was, was an easy decision to make. And I think, you know, one of the things I would, I totally get what you said earlier in the, you know, the, there's, there's a lot of social pressure around alcohol and drinking, particularly, you know, in the, in, um, in midlife, even on TV, you know, whether it be an American um, program or a, or a British program, I'm watching. You know, somebody comes home from work, you can guarantee, as soon as they get into their their house or their apartment, they're going to walk into the kitchen, open the fridge, and take out a bottle of something and pour themselves yeah. a drink. You know, it's just normalised to that extent. Um, what I actually found from a social perspective was, um, you know, my, my mates were. You know, to start off with, they were going, "Oh, you know, you're all right. You, you, you really are on antibiotics or whatever." I said, "No, I just don't. I just don't fancy a drink today." And then in the end, I said, "Look, I'm not going to drink again. I'm, I'm feeling so good. I'm not going to drink again." And they, they were just incredibly supportive of it. They, you know, there was no, no pressure. Um, in fact, I, you know, if I was to say, certainly now, but, but a lot earlier than now, oh, go on, I'll give, give, give me a scotch or give me a, you know. Give, give, give me a Sauvignon Blanc or whatever it might be, or a or a beer. They'd say no, no, we're not doing that. They'd, they'd actually be protective of it. So, um, you know, the, the the social pressure that I experienced was all in my head. It wasn't in in reality. Um, it, it and wherever you are, you know, whether it be um, you know, kind of functions around the kids or you know you're going out for a meal whatever there's always you know there's always great alternatives that you can that you can choose 
and you don't mind the only thing that you do tend to mind is you know some of the rubbish that gets said once your friends get drunk <laughs> yeah. uh, i don't know if you have this there um lately i i've seen a lot more non-alcoholic beer and there's a great brewery here in the states called athletic brewery yeah yeah and uh they make quite a few great non-alcoholic beers and so when i've when i've tried or have something social i'll keep some of that around yeah and, and i might have you know one regular beer but then at some point i'll try to switch it to that so i kind of blend in socially and i know that i'm having a little bit healthier alternative yeah. uh, and to be honest, some of that some of that non-alcoholic beer tastes better than, than the regular. <laughs> yeah absolutely good absolutely it's um yeah and and that's what i mean you know there's 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 some great alternatives but look you know I don't preach about it at all because at the end of the day it's down to everybody's individual choice and you know individual circumstances but i am a big proponent of at least you know moderating um yeah. alcohol because i know and there's plenty there is plenty of evidence to show that um it it when it comes to fitness it's it, it's it's not doing you any good at all yeah. in fact it's actively preventing you from making the gains that you could or, or that you could make you know yep. it reduces your testosterone production it reduces your energy it reduces every, you know it's not it, it it makes it harder to to burn fat it's um um yeah so it is actively kind of working against you but at the end it's it's everybody's choice but just be aware make choices yeah. of you know based on on knowledge and awareness not on you know feelings yeah i'd sort of just the point i'd want to get across to our audience is you know, do whatever you want, but don't trick yourself into believing that drinking is healthy in any way. I mean, the science is mm. pretty clear. Even a small amount is not good for you. I don't lie to myself and tell myself that either. I like red wine and I know that there's resveratrol in it, but I can get resveratrol in a very highly concentrated dose in a, in a supplement. If I really want resveratrol, I don't need to drink a glass or two in Merlot every night to get resveratrol in my system. So, you know, um, but anyways, again, another thing I, I appreciate you sharing with us, um, mm. in terms of your overall nutrition, you know, do you follow any specific kind of diet or what other, what kind of changes have you made over the course of the years in that area? Well, I, and again, it was, it was like a, the, the flick of a switch. So I, I, I literally went from unhealthy to healthy overnight and, um, the biggest thing that I changed was, you know, I, I stopped having um, pre-prepared foods, processed foods. Um, I cut down on my bread. <clears throat> I was a big fan of bread, <laughs> you know. Um, I always found that if I drank alcohol, then I'd always want some bread to go with it to kind of soak it up. Um, but um, yeah, so that those were the the, the kind of things that, that I, I stopped doing, and I went to. A, I didn't follow a particular diet plan. Um, I just went to stuff that I knew instinctively would be healthy. So it was high protein. Um, so, you know, a lot of fish, a lot of chicken, a lot of turkey, um, some red meat as well, but um, but less regularly. And with colorful vegetables. So, you know, either either salads um, or um, uh, kind of roasted, um, uh, what I call rainbow um vegetables so that's you know colorful colorful stuff like red onions pe uh, peppers um courgettes uh, all of those kind of things um so <clears throat> you know they, they were giving me my carbohydrates um but you know they're, they're low uh, glycogen index carbohydrates so you know um they're not gonna they're not gonna add fat onto my onto my body etc but, but you're I not didn't... afraid of plant toxins because the last few years everybody says vegetables will kill you and you should eat only meat and so it sounds like you don't buy <laughs> any, any uh, of that kind of hardcore um religious diet uh, stuff no so I, I i i just go with what i mean i go with what i like um and what i know to be healthy so i don't feel like i'm i'm kind of restricted in any way i don't i, I don't um cut calories in fact my calorie consumption was pretty much the same all the way throughout it's just a, a big change in the um the one change that actually with that would be the calories from the alcohol but um from a food perspective it was um it, it's it's been pretty much maintained but the quality has been vastly improved 
and because I'm I'm doing so much, um, you know, um, well, I, compared to the to the before picture, um, doing so much exercise, you know, the everything just you you obviously need the meat and the protein to build the muscle, um, the vegetables, you know, irrespective of uh, I'm not sure whether they are going to kill me, but uh, you know, for now I'm going to carry on. Um, you know, they give me the energy that I need to to do my running and various other things. The one thing that I do still have is um, is bread, but I switched out to sourdough, so um, and cut down on the on the amounts as well. So that uh, that made a big difference for me. Awesome. Um, in terms of dessert, um, do you have a favorite dessert? I scream normally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least yeah. that's got protein in, and depending on what you're getting, some healthy fat. But uh, yeah, you do have, have really great healthy alternatives like. Uh, I don't know. Here in the states, we have Keto ice cream as a brand, uh, and then there's endless numbers of oat ice cream, soy based ice cream, yeah. coconut milk ice cream, like anything you name it. Like so, there are alternatives if you just go down the shelf a little ways that you can get even for something like that. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I I'll put my hand up. I, I will just have the, uh, you know, the the normal full fat um, ice cream, but. Yeah, I don't have it that often. I don't have it. So, um, that, I would have that's what I would have if I was out in a restaurant, um, or if we were, you know, if there's some kind of special occasion at home. But it's not an everyday occurrence. <laughs> yep, my uh, I my biggest struggle, you know, aside from you know the alcohols we discussed, is uh, I still have three young kids, um, seven, ten, and twelve, and so like we don't re want to regulate them and make dessert seem like something that is, uh, you know bad you know we we do try yeah. to keep it under control but there tends to be a lot more of that around here uh be, than we would like because of them same with processed foods and extra snacks and and so i struggle with just getting into their stuff um finishing their plates and doing all those things that a dad does like you know watching them be like i hope they don't eat that because i'm gonna grab that as soon as it's there. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I'd probably be 10 pounds have, uh, lighter if I didn't finish the day. Sure. Sure. No, I, I know exactly what you mean. And um, you know, typically, um, you know, my son and I will, will, will eat together. And so he will have, you know, something at least very similar to what, um, to what I'm having. Um, you know, we, we, which is good. But, um, you know, I, he, I do give him his treats as well. He, he eats, you know, he'll eat pasta, which I, I won't that often um and various other kind of dishes but we don't do any processed foods so that's the one thing that i did change for him as well um i guess you know it sounds like in your at least in your family you're leading from out front has your son adopted or followed um any of your habit healthy habits um yeah certainly in the in the eating and in, in and also in the exercise he's more into his athletics at the moment so um, which is more you know, in keeping with with the sports that he plays, like um, like soccer and um, uh, cricket and uh, hockey on the uh, the grass for, or the astroturf variety rather than ice ice hockey. Um, so he does a lot around that. He, at the moment, he's doing the, um, he, he is actually doing um, a daily training plan for a, a ten k race that he's got uh, got upcoming. So that that's all great. You know, that's um, I, I did something similar when I when when I decided I was going to run a marathon um, and um, it's great to see that he'll he's he'll use the weights because I got some um, you know kids at home as well as working out at the gym thanks to good old COVID and the lockdown so you know you had to um, so he'll he'll use the weights and if he's got mates here it's great because they'll go in and they'll spot each other and they'll you know they'll they'll do a workout themselves so he kind of follows it um, but there's always that bit of you know I want to rebel a little bit about it against my dad so he doesn't go overboard <laughs> yeah he's probably more into the beef beefcake bodybuilding and <laughs> yeah, yeah but yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's funny though because um yeah i was i, I went to watch him uh a, a, a player so he changed school like um about uh about 12 months ago and uh just age related and um I went to uh, watch him play a, a, a soccer match and, you know, I could see that, that, you know, some mates, some him and his the mates were kind of talking about me, you know, when people are talking about you, whatever. So I, 
I said to him afterwards, um, you know, what's, uh, you know, everything all right? What were they, you know, what were they talking about? And um, they'd seen me, my TikTok page, uh, which at the time was uh, a lot bigger than Instagram. And, um, and I said, well, I had, you know, are you okay with that? How do you feel about it? And he's, and he's yeah, I feel great about it, actually. <laughs> you know, having, having a dad that's doing this, it's like, you know, it's like really cool. Mm-hmm. So, so um, you know, that, that, was, that was nice. I did kind of worry whether he'd be embarrassed, let's say, about, yeah. you know, his mate seeing me um, on, uh, on TikTok or Instagram or wherever else. But that's not the case. He's, 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 he feels really good about it. Yeah, I'm a little bit more behind the scenes. I, most of the videos on our site are made by a couple of trainers. One, um, Jim Smith, I, you know, check us out if you haven't, but uh, Jim Smith is 60 and um, Kevin Rail is 50. Um, right. So those guys are the guys you see mostly in our uh, social. Um, but uh, anyways, I, I, I try to try to get my kids involved in it. Um, they're more into the sports stuff as well. They like the yeah. speed and agility and uh those aspects of fitness training they're not so much into the weights yet uh, yeah. my older son goes goes to a speed and conditioning camp once a week and he they do some weightlifting. but um like you said they're they want to know how is this going to make me a better athlete how is this transfer to the field you know yeah but, but it's a start and i hope as they get older that they'll maybe uh you know build upon what they're doing now so yeah, and, and I'm, I'm I'm sure they will, and and having that as a foundation at that age, I just think, I do think it kind of gets instilled with you, and then, you know, with me, um, it may well be the case that if I hadn't have been the way that I was in my late teens and early twenties, I wouldn't have been able to make the change that I did when I was, you know, forty nine, because, mm-hmm. you know, I I kind of knew a little bit. I'd got, I I'd, I'd got at least mind memory, if not muscle memory, um. And so I felt reasonably confident about starting up again. Mm-hmm. We, we try to, uh, with the kids, one of the things we try to do is we try to teach them, make this a daily habit. So as part of their homework, we try to tell them they got to do something for 15 minutes a day. It doesn't have to be a formal exercise. Uh, it could be dribbling a basketball for 15 minutes. It could be going and throwing a ball against the house. I mean, it could yeah. be well, if they want to go in the basement and play hopscotch and do some speed and agility, that's fine, or jump rope. But oftentimes we're just like, you know, you're going to read for 15, 20 minutes and you're going to do this. And we hope that it just being a part of their life always that it, that it'll be easier for them. It's just, it's kind of like going to church and religion. If it's, if you grow up with that, then you go to church. It's easier to do that as an adult versus yes. having to pick that up and explore it later in life. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the more that we can do, you know, as parents to to encourage it rather than force it, then the, the, the better, you know, the better position we're leaving them in. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, well, Jason, I appreciate you coming on again. Thank you so much. Um, it was a pleasure meeting you and hearing about your story. Uh, you know, I'm a, about 14, 15 years behind you. Um, but, you know, I like hearing about hearing from guys like you because it helps motivate me to continue cleaning up my diet and making good change, leading from out front and being a good role model, um, you know, not just for my kids and my family, but for our, our customers. Um, and yeah, I, I appreciate it. Like I said, listening to everything you had, you shared with us. And um, if anybody is interested, we will post some of uh, Jason's transformation pictures on our Instagram um and youtube um and we'll hopefully have a a little bit more a blog and some other follow-up things with jason to to come soon um jason before we go is there anything you'd like to promote um you know your social your business your app anything particular well i guess you know if you search uh fit in midlife on either instagram or or uh, tiktok or google for that matter you'll find my socials and you'll you'll find my website as well um you know, I do, as that name suggests, I do specialize in uh, in training people in, in that stage of life. And yeah, there's a lot of good information on there. There's, there's uh, workouts, there's motivation, there's exercises. Um, you know, there's some of the things that, um, as I've shared here, that, you know, my own experiences, which may be helpful too. So yeah, check that out. I appreciate that. If you could email us those links, I can um, make sure to include them in the description below for folks to just click on them easily and- uh... Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. And then maybe uh, we can uh, connect again in the future and see how things are going. 
that'd be great and it's been an absolute pleasure and uh, and, and i hope uh, i hope uh, i hope you and uh, and those um you know listening and watching find it so uh, find it in, interesting and uh, and motivational thank you jason um we'll talk to you soon thanks again great to see you